The Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions will please come to order. This morning we're holding our second hearing in this Congress on the reauthorization of the Higher Education Act, which will focus on the role of consumer information in college choice. Senator Murray and I will each have an opening statement, then we'll introduce our panel of witnesses. Uh, after our witness testimony, senators will have five minutes of, of, of questions. This is our second higher education hearing, but we have a good head start. Last Congress, we held 13 hearings on higher education, and all but two of our members were there to, who were on this year's committee were on last year's committee. We also have a head start in the sense we have several bipartisan pieces of legislation that, have, that are on the, this subject of, of, of higher education reauthorization. There's the FAST Act, Bennett, Booker, Burr, King, Isaacson, and I introduced that uh, based on testimony before this committee from last year about simplifying federal student aid and reducing borrowing. There's the Repay Act. Senator Burr, along with Senators King, Warner, Rubio, Collins, and I have that, introduced that. That would simplify loan repayment. Then Senator Mikulski, Burr, Bennett, and I are planning to introduce legislation to incorporate many of the recommendations from the report we ask for on federal rules and regulations governing colleges and universities and how to simplify them. Senator Murray and I will work together to put all of this and other information into a bipartisan process for reauthorizing the Higher Education Act. I hope we can produce a bill for that this fall. This now becomes the major effort of our committee. Now the committee's finished its work on the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. We're here today to examine what students want and need to know in order to make their college choices and to look at whether this matches up with the information the federal law requires colleges to collect. Uh, it's important to note that since 1944 with the federal, with the GI Bill for, for veterans, federal aid has followed students to the colleges of their choice. So American college students have lots of choices, more than 6,000. And to make a smart choice, students need information. The federal government collects and disseminates information on colleges and universities. The testimony we'll hear today will say it does a better job of collecting than disseminating. We'll talk about that. That requires time and money from the institutions. I have an example here of the data survey that each of our almost 1,000 public community colleges must fill out. That is this. Every one of our two-year schools has to fill this out. Uh, other 5,000 colleges and un universities have a similar document they fill out. This one is 426 pages of data requirements and reporting instructions, 3,300 different necessary responses or inputs. The question is, are all those necessary, are all those useful to students? Last year, the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators issued a report on federally mandated college consumer disclosures. They've lent me this 900-page binder to show what one university with two campuses is required to disclose. Uh, some of, most of this is made public on the institution's website, but the law and regulations prescribe a dizzying variety of ways the different disclosures must be sent to current students, and upon request the public, items range from the useful and necessary, such as terms and conditions of student aid, to such things as informing students uh, when Constitution Day is. So the question is, is all this necessary? The more important question is, how much of this is actually useful to students making a college choice? The president of that association suggested that such an overwhelming amount of information uh, students will have a hard time making good use of. We have this phenomenon in too many areas of life today. For example, if you get a mortgage loan or if you buy a car, you fill out, you, you're provided with so, many, so much information, consumer information, it may not help you. At colleges, the burden of getting this information to the student falls in most cases on the financial aid offices. This takes away time and money from other important activities like counseling students about loans or the careers they might follow. 90% of college administrators, those who work every day with this information, say the requirements, many of them could be eliminated or modified or improved, and they're among the most bur burdensome part of higher education regulation. 
I got a note from the president of a University of Missouri College the other day, whom I don't know, but he said, I've been in higher education administration for over 40 years, the last 20 as university president. I've never experienced the amount of regulatory pressure our institution currently faces. What I just discussed is only a part of the mandates on colleges and universities by the federal government. When we reauthorized the Higher Education Act in 2008, I brought a copy of all the regulations, sub-regulations, the guidance, dear colleague letters and forms. I brought them to the Senate floor. I stacked them up and they were as tall as I was. And the new law produced even more. Uh, I mentioned earlier the report that four members of this committee have commissioned on higher education regulations. That commission found what it called a jungle of red tape strangling colleges and universities, overloading consumers with an enormous amount of information. They listed uh, information that was an overload among the top 10 areas they identified as particularly burdensome. Uh, such questions about copyright infringement or how many fire drills the institution holds each year. The question is, do the students actually need and use this information? The most well-known federal consumer tool is the College Navigator, uh, which uh, is in, came from the last Higher Education Act. If you print out information from the College Navigator, and you'll excuse me for going on a little bit here, this, 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 is, this is the College Navigator for the University of Tennessee. I tried to navigate it myself this morning. Um, it, it, it's hard to read. I'm not sure it helps students very much. It's a lot of information, takes a lot of time to do it. Two years ago, the White House added a new federal tool, the College Scoreboard. Uh, the Center for American Progress looked at it and summarized it this way. What am I looking at? We know students are not using federal websites for college. One survey showed only 18% of prospective adults used any interactive website to compare colleges. College Board found only 12% of high school students reported using government tools to learn about college costs. Consumer information that is too complicated to understand or to use is worthless. She can speak for herself, but Senator Warren understands this. In her time at the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, she tried to boil down the mortgage disclosure form to a two-page shopping sheet, if I remember right, so people could actually understand what they were getting. This leads to these questions. How might consumer information actually become useful for prospective students and families? What better information may be needed and what requirements can we eliminate? We have a panel of distinguished witnesses here today with hands-on knowledge of how prospective families and students use information to decide upon a college. This is a bipartisan hearing, which means Senator Murray and I have jointly selected the witnesses. We learn more that way. I want to thank her for working with me in that way, and I now recognize Senator Murray for her opening comment.